In 1959, I was very lucky to be selected to tour Great Britain and France with the Kangaroos and that same team were a host of very young lads between 19 and 21 who would have become legendary rugby league figures. Raper, Irvine, Bugden, Muir, Parrish, Lumsden, just to name a few. But one with only about six first grade games was to play his first test on English soil and startle the rugby league world with three great tries in his debut. Puff, the Magic Dragon. Watch him in action now for St George, Reg Gaznio. Commentator with Channel 2 with uh, John O'Reilly, and we're happy to have him on the show. What's it like looking at yourself in action? It's great, Rex, and, uh, well, it certainly brings back memories. That blinding yeah. acceleration you used to have, Reg, you can't do it anymore. They used to say you keep your head up like that and uh, it'll <laughs> off goes the head and on goes the button, but uh, <laughs> that was great. Tremendous, Rex. Yes, well, that's, uh, I had to look very hard to find it, too, because you played in an era that <clears throat> was fairly obsolete as far as the media was concerned. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> how, have you got any idea how many tries you scored during your career? Well, I, I checked with John Fleming, the, uh, our secretary at, at St George, and he said that I'd played 143 games for the club and uh, something like 107 tries. That was with St George. But um, I, I don't know. Many more uh, representative ones, do you? Yes. Uh, what do you believe was your own most priceless asset on the football field? I think, um, I guess the acceleration, Rex. You know, keeping... Uh, and did you I, I have that from the time you were a little kid, or...? I used to do athletics at school, right through, and speed off the mark. I think that's important for a centre three-quarter. After all, it's, uh, the first uh, 10, 15 metres is the important one. Once you make that break, yeah. well, you can pick up uh, your outside backs. What's your philosophy on league? Is it a game of mixed dimensional uh, attack and defence, or is it mostly attack or mostly defence? Well, I think that you've got to base your game on attack. Um, I think far too many coaches do coach their side on, on defence and concentrate far too much. But I think uh, it, you've got to have both, of course. Uh, you've got to stop tries as well as scoring them. But I, th I believe the emphasis should be on scoring tries. Reg, as an expert on scoring tries and setting them up, we've got some very classy examples I want you to have a look at. You've mm. called some for Channel 2, I've called others for Channel 7. Right. But today we're just doing it for rugby league, right? Here's a, a beauty, one that I'm sure you'll enjoy, the Chamberlain try for uh, the Cronulla side. He's a very good player, Chamberlain. <coughs> well, I had uh, logged 14 players handling the ball during this try. Have you ever seen a better try than this one? No, it's not too bad. There's, there's been some great tries scored this year, and of course the, the advantage of keeping the ball alive the movement should have been stopped there, but this is great work backing up and the, obviously the Balmain defence is shut to pieces and Chamberlain uh, is in. Yes, that was a superb one and I think you on Channel 2 had the pleasure of calling this one. This one, yes. This is uh, really class football. And, uh, well, we've seen Canterbury play this way the last two weeks. I think you'll uh, agree that quick hands is the answer in this try. The pass, the ball virtually is like a hot potato, isn't it? Yes. yes. Look at this, bang. Of course, they're standing flat-footed there, but again, whilst that ball is alive, they're building an attack, and uh, this is exactly what happens here. What do you think yeah. of the contemporary footballers? Uh, do you compare them with the people of your own era, or are they better? I would... Uh, oh, you know, it's a different ball game now, Rex. is in different training conditions. This fellow's not a bad centre three quarter. Just they me, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Roger's the best in the world, obviously, and, uh, you know, he's backing up there through... He puts Edmonds in through that, uh, a great try there. And, and that's a type of football that Canella played throughout the year, but uh, regrettably, they missed out the last couple of games. Yeah, they fell away in a heap, didn't they? Didn't they? Wingers no longer score a heap of tries as they used to. You had uh, famous players in your era and your team, Ryan and uh, Lumsden and people like that. Johnny King. Johnny King, but yeah. uh, they don't score the tries they used to. Well, I think it's a game now where the forwards play a major role, and I think at times forwards, far too many forwards get in the back line, but uh, that's the type of game it is now. The back row three, second rows and, and lock forwards. You've only got to take your price and ready on these fellows. They're, they're great attacking players. Well, this was the magnificent try coming up to Larry Corowit in the test match against a very ordinary English side, but yeah. it still doesn't take anything away from the, the great try, does it, with Rogers again involved up yeah. to his boot tops. Yeah. Well, of course, Larry's a fantastic attacking player too. You can't give that fellow any uh, start. You know, Reg, while we're on the subject and while we've got you here, which one is the try that you liked the best out of that lot? Which one would you say? Well, I think the Canterbury try I thought yeah. was uh, quite... But that, you know, the one scored by Anderson. Pick. Yes, I, I, I thought that was really one of the best tries I've seen this year, but uh, we've seen some good ones, haven't we? Can't argue with that. Yeah. I thought while we've got you...